So, Martine, you're a project lead at Agen. Yes. So, tell us something about yourself. Yeah. Um, who knows Agen as a company? Okay, nice. Oh, that's a lot of people. Pretty right? okay. <laughs> uh, so, we are a fintech company based in Amsterdam. Um, and that's a great, great story. Uh, I recognize a lot about myself. Um, so it's not very natural for me to be on stage. I think it's uh, interesting to have females in IT on stage because I think when you choose for IT, I choose to be behind the scenes. So please bear with me. Pretty nervous. But um, so when I was young, uh, my dad did his PhD. So luckily, uh, same as Tessie, we had a computer. But uh, I'm a little bit older as Tessie, I think. So we had like massive uh, floppy disks. <laughs> and um, PhD is quite important to finish it, but I uh, managed to crash the, crash the PC of my dad time after time. He was so done, so I got my own computer. Um, so then I worked on uh, Paperboy SimCity. I really loved it, and I think that was the start of my interest in uh, computers. Okay, so why did you choose this job? Um, so I wanted to go to med school. Um, I did the beta on high school, and um, same story again, and I think it's very interesting, maybe there's something about the Dutch system. They said to me, please don't go beta, choose to go for the languages. And then a fire let up in me and said, okay, I'm going to prove you wrong. Um, so I did the beta, I want to go to med school, and maybe, as you know, it's a lottery in the Netherlands, so I had the wrong number, and I couldn't go to med school. So then I started to do economics, but I never, ever had anything about economics. So my first year I failed, but it was a big party. Uh, so <laughs> no, no yeah, problem nice at all. Anyway. But my yeah. parents said, OK, you can fail one time, you can do this once, but the second year you have to succeed. Again, the lottery, again, I was out. Oh. So then I thought, what now? And uh, then I thought, OK, what is really my passion? And that was IT. And that was the moment I started to uh, yeah, see what study I could do. And that was uh, business in IT in uh, Groningen. Uh, I had the luck to go to Istanbul to uh, do e-commerce. And Istanbul was pretty far ahead of the Netherlands back then. People were already talking in 2004 about Facebook, Alibaba. Uh, and then I thought, this is interesting. I really want to go for it. So after that, that you uh, came to Booking.com? Uh, well, I want to show you one photo. Just a clicker work, I think. So I want to show you this photo. This was my first IT job. So see the amount of uh, females. So uh, <laughs> that's me they? in the middle. <laughs> um, so um, I think it was also interesting. It was 2008. Uh, I wanted to start in IT, and a lot of people graduated with me, and nobody got the job. We literally graduated in September. People went to Atos, Cap Gemini. We went on travel. Our credit cards were fully charged, and they said, sorry, you cannot come. We don't have a job anymore. So I hustled myself a job in an IT startup, 3D visualization. 2008, I had to explain everybody what 3D was about. Um, they developed a software program for real estate in 3D, but also then the real estate market collapsed. Um, so after two and a half years, really, really hard working in, uh, in a startup, day and night, three o'clock at night, um, I had the chance to go to an IT security company called Idemia. Maybe, I think a lot of people have a passport here. Um, but then I was the head of the Dutch passport and the Finnish passport. You have a small chip in your passport, there's an operation system. Uh, so we developed it, and um, I don't know how they did it, I was very young. But they made me head of the Finnish passport, so I was responsible for the design, the rollout, and the factory. So there I learned to be very precise, because you can imagine if you don't meet your deadline for a passport, people cannot travel anymore. Um, so that was a very interesting period, and there I really learned always make sure you hit the 100% if you do things in IT. Don't go for the 90%. Be precise. Go for the best. Um, very interesting period, um, but it was like a, a French, very hierarchical company. Uh, the complete board was around 50, white, male, so I thought, okay, what should I do? And then luckily, Booking.com called. Um, I saw also a position on LinkedIn, and the position was head of APIs XML. I thought, wow. But I didn't have a clue what it was. 
<laughs> what was so, it? What, what was, was it? Well, it, it took me one year to learn. <laughs> but what I did was, um, I thought, okay, booking is interesting, but I called one of my best friends. He worked in IT. I said, okay, can you teach me in one night what APIs are in XML? He said, yeah, sure, why? I said, tomorrow I have a job application. He said, no <laughs> way. So I did, and on Wikipedia, I found some information, and uh, I got the job. Really? Yeah. What did you tell them? Uh, well, uh, not so much about APIs, to be honest. Uh, but they were looking for a person who could communicate very well with developers, uh, but also has a very big interest in the commercial communication uh, side of the business. So really being that bridging gap. So what, what became your role at Booking.com then? So uh, the first years I was head of APIs and XML. Um, there I really learned how it worked. Uh, but it was a really rough time. I think uh, Booking.com back then was not so famous as it is now. I think 3,000 people globally. Um, when I left four, five, four or five years later, it was 19,000. Okay. Uh, it was very data-driven, um, very hard-growing. Uh, so, yeah, the first year I barely survived, to be honest. I think after the first year, year they were in doubt to keep me yes or no. Uh, and then I think in the second year, something changed, I was at lunch with the CTO, and he said, hey, Martinique, can we have a sandwich? Yeah, very Dutch. <laughs> and um, he said, um, I have a question, and uh, yeah, this is lunch. Let's discuss if you want to do it, yes or no, but I need my answer now. We have a project in China. Do you want to take it on? I said, okay, yeah, why not? He said, okay, Monday morning, you're flying out with all the board to Shanghai. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I was there with uh, the board of Booking.com and also the board of, board of C-Trip. C-Trip is a massive Chinese company of 30,000, 40,000 employees. Uh, I still didn't have a clue what it was about, but it was a, like a kind of migration uh, to the, both companies. And um, three, three weeks later, they said, well, can you maybe move to Shanghai? And um, I did it. So then I lived in <laughs> Shanghai. And I think there what I learned is um, if you get a very bold question like this, it's uh, okay to sometimes just do it and see where it ends. Yeah, it's really cool because when you said from Booking.com you didn't know anything about APIs or and you just you just went for it. Why? Um, because I, that was first. I always thought that everybody is way smarter than I am. Well, I still do think so, especially in Agen. I think we have a lot of smart people in the company. Uh, but it's okay to learn on the job. You can really learn on the job and. Um, I still remember uh, the big meeting in the, with the Chinese board and the Dutch board that the CTO of Booking asked me, what do you think? And I thought, why, why is he asking me? He said, yeah, but you're here. You know the project way better than I am. So then I really learned that, yeah, you can have the trust of uh, the board, how big and famous they are. They're just human. And yeah. I think that uh, in the that end helped. helped me. Yeah. Okay, so now you ended up with Achen. Why Achen? Um, well, so uh, I was working at Booking.com, was doing new de business development, and after five years, I finally understood what APIs really did. So I knew the trick a little bit. Uh, then I was uh, trying to create a marketplace for software, and I needed payments. So I thought, well, okay, yeah, you, have, uh, now you, you have your own bank pass. How hard can it be? Uh, but then I had a call with IGN, and then I thought, okay, this is trouble. This is not okay. This is very, very difficult. But the people of Argent were very nice, helping me, but I thought this is very complex. Um, I went there for a coffee, and I thought, oh, these people are really nice. Uh, I like the, the, the way of working. Um, and then I thought, okay, I think I, my, my learning curve at uh, booking is getting a little bit flat. So I asked for a job. And uh, then after three months, they said, well, I think we have a position about uh, what I do nowadays about partnership and e-commerce platforms. Really inspirational. You just, you grabbed your opportunities and you, you, you asked for them also. Yeah, and it was also a culture fit, right? I think what, uh, what I was re really looking for is a small company, uh, smaller than Booking.com. It was 19,000. Uh, Ajan back then was like 800. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no rules. There are no hierarchies. I really like the culture. Uh, I think one of the only rules we have is no blush policy. Like, you can do everything, but as soon as they pick you out of the audience and put you on the stage, if you start blushing, you know you're wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Do you want to go to that ex expensive hotel? Well, maybe if it, if it uh, or expensive restaurant. If you have uh, closed a deal with a very good customers, yes, you can. Uh, but are you going on your own? Yeah, for, with friends? No.
So uh, I really like the culture, really building for speed, work very, very hard. Nobody's checking on me. If I want to do a project, you do it. Uh, you really work together with the board. Uh, I think uh, just in the break, the CCO called me like, Martina, we're about to close a very big deal. What do you think? And I'm only one year in the company. I think, oh, that's, that's good. great. That's great. Right? You're still calling me. And how, how does that make you feel? Uh, sometimes, and that's my, maybe uh, my own insecurity, like, okay, yeah, nice that you're calling me, but I think you're way smarter than I am. Um, but since the company is so small, uh, I think if you ask for a lot of opportunities, you really get it. For us, it's really like creating your own career. Uh, I was a little bit interested in finance because I don't know anything about banking. So maybe the Dutch people know we have uh, Joop Wijn in our board. The, the State Secretary of Finance and Economics of the Netherlands. And I wanted to know a little bit about accounting. And I thought, yeah, I have one of the smartest guys in the board. I said, hey, yo, do you have time for a coffee? Can you explain about finance? He said, yeah, sure. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you if you just ask it, ask then you get it. opportunities, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, what's the most important thing you learned in your career so far? Um, I think IT is going so fast, you have to put a lot of effort in it to stay up to date. I think I try to read everyday articles, to also do online courses, trainings. Um, and also ask your colleagues for advice. Uh, I don't know how it is in everybody's company, but IGN is very complex. I don't know anything about banking, but I know about APIs and e-commerce platforms. I always ask my co uh, colleagues for help. What do you think? I'm building this. Does it infect your product? Uh, product? Uh, do I break something? Uh, so really ask people. Don't be hide behind email. Walk up to people. Uh, yeah, that's also a rule at IGN, right? Don't yeah. email each other, just walk to each other like, hey. Yeah. What yeah, do you we, want to know? We really try to build for speed. And you can imagine we have a second headquarter in San Francisco. We have now 22 offices. Although if we open an office, it can also be like one guy in Hong Kong. But uh, <laughs> It has to start somewhere, right? That's also a start. Uh, but imagine you have to always wait for emails. It's so delaying. Why just don't stand up from your desk, walk to the colleague. You can have a coffee. It's nice. It's fun. Have a sandwich. Have a sandwich, a glass of milk. <laughs> and um, it's quicker. And you also learn from each other. If you have an email, you can get so much miscommunication. And if IT is complex, you cannot have any miscommunication. Yeah, so maybe face-to-face -face is better than if you just want to discuss something quickly. Yeah. So now you're a, a project lead. What does that mean? Yes, yeah, so I want to... Can I show something? A short movie. About that, yeah? Yeah. Grab, go, right? done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, what you do as a, a product lead, and this is a very simple slide. So what you just saw in a movie, it looks very easy. But in the end, they're doing an, an offline payment, what we call the terminals. You know it from the shops. Um, he has his mobile phone. Uh, this time we, we skipped the, the online shopping. But what we're trying to do is to make everything very, very seamless. But you have a lot of coding. Uh, I think why Agen is different, we built everything in-house on one code base. But as a, a, a product lead, you have to talk with the customers. What do you want? Um, you have, I think, globally hundreds of payment methods. So this guy is paying with a uh, MasterCard. So you have to talk to the card schemes. You have to talk to your stakeholders. But uh, I think uh, now everybody knows nowadays uh, we also have a bank license. So you have to be very aware of what you're building in a very secure way. But if you have a massive customer, you want to launch as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So I think what is intriguing for me, and also as a, as a product lead, you're going through this whole life cycle, what we see behind us. Have from discovery, what is needed, what do our customers want. And then you're going to build it very small. Our teams are very small. Uh, then you, you're going to uh, pilot it, test it, and then you have to sell it to all the customers. Um, and I it's think quite a challenging job, right? Yeah, I think some, uh, I, I counted uh, uh, last week. On average, as a product lead, you have kind of 25 stakeholders. 
but yeah, you also have to build it. You want to be at events like this. So uh, what I really like is sometimes to go very deep in an API and to understand how you have to build it. But the next time you're on an event like this or you're presenting to big customers uh, how, the, how the product flow goes. Yeah, last week you were in Las Vegas. Now you're here. Yeah. You have a busy life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the patience. <laughs> uh, in the airplane, I was preparing this. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, when you look at the biggest challenges you face in your job, yeah, I think um, except that you cannot understand everything. Uh, it sounds very strange, but uh, I thought, oh, when I will be in Ayen, you have payments, you have banking, you have security. I will understand everything in three months. Well, after three months, I was happy I could breathe again. Um, and even after one year, it's getting complex, it's fast. So accept that you cannot understand everything on your own and use your colleagues, but try to find the colleagues you need around you. I think that uh, really helped me. And when you look at the male to female ratio of, um, of a gen, how is it? Well, uh, yesterday we've had a great milestone. So we have now 30.1% female in the company. Okay, that's really good. So finally we hit uh, the mark <laughs> above 30. Um, so we're coming about the, the mid-20s, uh, but I think we are also in a very yeah, complex environment. It's financial, it's fintech, it's developers, so I think we're doing fine with 30%, uh, but we're looking for more females, so if you're looking for a job, come by. Someone in the audience said there were. So. Yeah, if you're looking for a job, <laughs> come by. Uh, we have a lot of open positions, and we also, and I think it's important to say, like, we also hire people with no background in uh, financial or uh, in tech, per se. So Why? Uh, because it's really good to sharpen your ideas with different kind of people. I think if you're all the same, it will not give the best product. There's the diversity we're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, So, um, uh, do you like to have more female tech heroes around you also? Definitely, definitely. I think uh, today is a great example, and thanks again for organizing it. I think uh, the level of quality of the talks is very high here. Um, unfortunately, yeah, there are not so many uh, female tech heroes yet. Uh, on the other side, uh, I was uh, just uh, discussing it uh, here in, the, in front of the row, we're also very busy, right? When you work in tech, the pressure is high. We have to work hard, you have to work fast. Uh, it's maybe also not uh, in, in at least my nature to be on stage. So I think there are a lot of female tech heroes. Maybe we're a little bit invisible at the moment. What should we do to change it? Uh, should we change it? Um, I think yes. Uh, myself, I, I try to be here on stage. Um, I also do. It's it an achievement for you, right? Yeah, yeah it's an achievement. Yeah. But also at our tech uh, company event of Agen this year, 40% was female presenting. Okay. Uh, so I think that's very nice, and it was a very uh, yeah discussion of the board to really have more females on stage. Um, so yeah, I think it's very important. Um, yeah, and also really in your organizations, it's what I'm trying. If you see junior females who are a little bit maybe too shy and there are different roles, try to help them, try to educate them, and also try to promote him, them and to say, okay, don't be shy. I think you can be a project manager or a product manager. What do you need from me to help you to get you in that role? So. Uh, looking back, back at your career so far, I think you made a lot of bold moves, so that's really cool. Yeah, uh, I failed a lot, sir. I failed yeah. a lot, sir. <laughs> that's good. We heard from Nelly this yeah. morning, right? So, if you look back at your career, if you could say something to the younger version of yourself, what would you say? Um, so, I have a, a, a question also for the audience. I think who recognized this picture? I see. You can, can somebody answer it? Can you answer it? Yes. So I think, um, and maybe we can take a time to read it, but I think this is very applicable in, uh, if you work in IT. So I think the, the world is really changing fast. We see it, amazing presentation about the car, uh, innovations. But I think what, what I learned, if you want to succeed in IT, be the best, be prepared. Uh, sometimes, you, yeah, you have to run as, twice as fast as possible. Uh, go for that 100%, but it's also really okay to fail. Um, I think I made massive failures also in my China project. Uh, but yeah, be prepared. That's your tip also for the audience. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So who has a question for uh, Martina? Uh, I'm looking where my colleague is. With, oh, the catch box is over there. Yeah, great. Yeah, you can talk into the microphone in the box. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, you have a very demanding job. So how do you do with the work-life balance? I mean, like something that, uh, how do you deal with that, with the stress or with the family life and so on? Yeah, a great question. Thank you. Um, what I, I work according OKR, so I'm very strict for myself uh, and also for, for the team around me. I prioritize to extreme. So I really know what my one, two, three is, what to work on. Um, and if a new project comes in, I said, okay, it's not on my priority list. What is the business case around it? If it's uh, something new comes in, I take something out. I'm very clear about it. Uh, and then I deprioritize deprioritize uh, another thing I'm working on because otherwise you're adding up all the time and you, it becomes very stressful. It's stressful for the team. It's stressful for everything. It's creating a mess. So I think for me it's like laser sharp focus and prioritization in what you're working on. Thanks. And saying no. That's, uh, saying no, that's difficult. Yeah. Right? Uh, another question in the front. Can you throw it to the front, please? Oh. <laughs> Great. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what were the soft skills which helped you the most in your development in your career? Um, I think, yeah, I don't know exactly if it's a soft skill, but uh, really, uh, also sometimes it sounds very strange, but also read books. Don't be afraid to go very deep, like read a book of 300 pages, it doesn't have to be 300 pages, but go deep in the technical details about APIs, right? You, you take the time to go technically deep. Um, and also try to listen. Uh, also, I think what Nelly said, uh, sometimes be bold and yeah, sometimes I have the feeling I all, almost have to be masculine in meetings. Um, but also don't uh, be afraid to ask advice to very senior people. It's okay, they're very, very happy to help. Thank you. Another question for Martina. Oh, it's in the, in the, oh. In the oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. Um, you say uh, that you uh, work and cooperate uh, with other uh, jobs, that not necessarily uh, tech jobs. Do you work also a lot with students and uh, government organizations in yeah. hackathons or stuff like that? Yeah, I think uh, we have a very nice program at Adyen and called Me Mechanical Masters. So we have around 80 to 90 students working in our organization. Uh, we made it very flexible. We say it's the way of life. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have HR rules again. Um, we don't like processes. So we said, okay, how can we make young people enthusiastic for our gen? Uh, so they can work one or two or three days a week. Um, and we, yeah, we ask them for help all the time. So you can request a student in your team. But the project should be hard, and it should be about optimization. So we don't bring in students for like re uh, repetitive, simple tasks. Uh, and I think last year, I think our recruitment is here, but we hired 40% of those students. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. So yes. I was wondering, um, do you see yourself as a female tech hero? Um, yeah, to be honest, not really. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what, what makes you a hero, right? I don't know. Um, but what I do hope is that uh, yeah, I inspire uh, people to, to take bold moves, to not be afraid to go into a subject that you're not familiar with. Um, and if you have any questions, add me to LinkedIn, or if you're interested in a job, like, uh, yeah, approach me, but also help each other, right? We should be friends and not enemies. Exactly, so give her a warm applause, you did well. Thank you. Everybody.